Welcome to Kansas Farm Bureau's 100th annual meeting. For more than one century, Kansas Farm Bureau has played a living, growing role in agriculture throughout Kansas, the United States, and around the world. This week we will celebrate our distinguished past of work, ideas, and commitments that made this organization a strong, unified voice of agriculture. And we will look forward together to a dynamic future. got the FB logo. Now it's on. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Kansas Farm Bureau's 100th annual meeting. Thanks for joining us this week for what we hope will be a successful and great experience for all of you, and a very special experience as well as we celebrate 100 years of advocacy, education, education and service. We don't have enough time to share all of the great highlights and good work that you and your farm organization have done over the last hundred years. Probably you're thankful for that. But I hope that each of you will take a minute to grab the Centennial publication that was in your, your information packet and, and take a look at that. And after you leave this annual meeting, we'd also encourage you to take a look at a brand new website dedicated to our Centennial celebration. You can visit kfb100years.com to not only see this work in action over the next year, but also learn about other special events that we'll be hosting throughout 2019 to celebrate as well. And finally, we want to hear from you, our members, and collect your memories about the organization and your experiences in your lifetime or your years of, of service to the organization. So if you have time today, we have a video studio set up in the Cottonwood Room. Um, and please stop there and share your stories, which will be uploaded to that Centennial website as well. So that. We Farm Bureau members for years can appreciate your information and the good work that's happened. And by the way, did you notice that all of our special speakers and guest speakers over the next couple of days are Kansans? Dale Moore, AFBF's new Executive Vice President, Mace Thornton, who's the Executive Director of Communications for American Farm Bureau, and Rick McNary, who's the Vice President of Public and Private Outreach for the Outreach Program, are all grown and raised in Kansas. That's pretty cool and indicates that we're doing something special around here, I think. Today, we're going to take time to recognize the work of our County Farm Bureau members, but before we do that, I'd like to ask our president, Rich Phillips, to come say a few words. Thank you, Terry. I just want to repeat <clears throat> what Terry's just said. We are so thankful that each one of us or being here as part of our 100th anniversary. We commemorate and we'll be brief because we have a lot to accomplish here this morning. But like I said last night, change is inevitable. But the good news is as farmers, we're well adapted to change, but we must be. Our farm, our farm organization has survived for 100 years because of this. We stood up, shown up, and stood up when we need to. We have fought for our way of life and the ability to stay on the farm. We continue to preserve even when it seems like the deck is stacked against us. Each of you should have one of the three lapel pins. Have everybody got one yet? You haven't? Let's make sure before you get away from here that everybody has one of these lapins. But just like it says, we're celebrating our distinguished past while we look forward to a dynamic future. I know this organization will continue to thrive for the next hundred years because of the people like you. People like you are invested in your farm, your community, and your industry. Our future is bright because just like in 1919, we know together we will accomplish more than we can ever do alone. Terry? Let's get started with some acknowledgments. Thank you, Mr. President. You know all these events and activities don't just happen magically. It takes a team of folks doing all kinds of activities from publications to registration to CEO management to making sure to make sure that you all have a great experience at these events and activities. So KFB staff, if you're in the room, if you take a minute to stand and wave to the crowd, Friends, if you would join me in thanking our team for the great work they do in putting together this annual meeting. Thank you. 
None of them are standing, but you know, they don't listen very well. Folks, for those of you who are in the back of the room standing, there are seats on the side over here if you're interested in, in, in sitting. If not, please continue to stand at the back. Okay. <laughs> Let's get to work, right? This morning, we're going to start with our Fringe of Agriculture Award winners. These awards honor those who have made significant contributions as Farm Bureau members, as volunteers, as ag education teachers, and as former Kansas Farm Bureau staff members. We'll announce this winners one at, one at a time, and as I do, please join the president on stage to receive your award. First up is Scott Chapman from Mitchell County. Throughout his life, Scott has focused on agriculture. He's been a teacher, an extension agent, and a true friend of the industry. Scott's retired from extension, but continues to remain actively involved in Mitchell County Farm Bureau. Scott, thanks so much for your service. Our next recipient this morning is Craig Cooper from Sheridan County. Craig served as KFB's 10th district administrator for 32 years. In that role, he worked to ensure that county farm bureaus had the tools and resources that they need to succeed and that our members were able to engage locally and beyond to ensure that agriculture and communities in Northwest Kansas remain vibrant. We're grateful for the years of service, Craig, and wish you and Suzanne the best in retirement. Rosetta Ducher from Ellis County served as a county coordinator for Ellis County from 1991 to 2001, and then as Ellis and Trigo County coordinator from 2001 until her retirement in 2016. In that 35 years of service to Farm Bureau, she was instrumental in starting the ongoing Ellis and Trigo County Kids Ag Days, serving more than 400 students a year. In her time, they developed the Ellis County Ag in Motion Mobile Education Trailer, that's a mouthful and numerous other farm safety days, and initiated the Fort Hayes State University Collegiate Farm Bureau chapter. Congratulations, Rosetta. <laughs> Stephen Hines is our next recipient. Steve is from Hamilton County, is unable to join us today. He's a devout Farm Bureau member, serving on the Resolutions Committee, the Hay and Forage Committee, the Grain and Feed Committee, and several other assignments related to water and other topics in his years with us. Steve served on the Hamilton County Board for 24 years, including terms of President and Vice President. We'll make sure Steve gets his award. Our next winner this morning is Diane Hubler. Diane is from Wabudsey County and retired from Farm Bureau in 2012. She's an active member currently serving as the President of Wabudsey County Farm Bureau. She and her husband Larry open their farm to visitors whenever they have the opportunity. They love to share the, the story of agriculture with others. Congratulations, Diane. Next is Larry Kepley from Grant County. Larry's entire life has been dedicated and involved in agriculture. He's been a farmer, a teacher, an extension agent, a leader locally on the state level and nationally. He helped organize the Southwest Kansas Pork Producers, served on local boards including the Farm Bureau Board, the Fair Board, and the Southwest Kansas Irrigators Board of Directors. Statewide, he served the Kansas Wheat Growers Association and Commission, holding offices in both groups. Larry has given countless hours to promote and educate people about agriculture. Thanks, Larry, and congratulations. <laughs> Harold and Virginia Krause from the Ellis County area have served agriculture for more than 20 years. Their son, Harold Jr., will receive the award for his parents who were unable to join us today. Harold's a founding member of the National Biodiesel Board, and the Krauses were named Master Farmer and Homemakers in 1998. They hosted Kids Ag Days in Ellis County on their farm for 18 years and have two state historical sites on their farm. Let's congratulate the Krauses. <laughs> Next, we're honored to recognize Sandy Manor, who retires from Farm Bureau this year after 18 years of service as our fourth district administrator. In her tenure at Kansas Farm Bureau, Sandy served for Kennedy's well, participated in a variety of Farm Bureau committees, and designed unique training tools and protocols for county officers and board members statewide. 
Sadie, thanks so much for your service and congratulations. Our next award winner this morning is Daryl Montford from Allen County. Daryl's been active farming since the age of 10, involved in his family farm since that time. Active in his community, he's served on the, on the fair board, leading 4-H clubs, and is a spokesperson with local media on ag issues. He's also very active in Kansas Farm Bureau and the Kansas Veterinary Medical Association. Congratulations, Daryl. Harry Watts retired from Kansas Farm Bureau this year after 18 years of service to the organization. Harry brought years of community development and government relations experience to Kansas Farm Bureau and served as our lead on policy and advocacy, most recently running the Kansas Farm Bureau Foundation. We'll miss Harry's passion for those who strive to improve their communities and way of life and wish him well in the next chapter. Congratulations to all of our Friend of Agriculture Award winners this morning. We appreciate the work that each of you have done on behalf of your county, state, industry, and farm organizations. Let's give them all one more round of applause. Now we'll recognize the 2018 Natural Resources Award winners. This award is presented to farm families who exemplify excellence in land stewardship. Ted and Lisa Getterman from Johnson County are this year's winners. Let's watch a video highlighting their work. Ted and Lisa Guterman own and operate an 1,100-acre row crop farm in both Miami and Johnson counties. Ted was born into the fourth-generation farm and chose to continue the legacy of caring for the land. He and Lisa have four sons. One has returned to the farm, and the others continue to learn about the farm and conservation as they grow. The family's farm includes amylos and waxy corn, soybeans and soft winter wheat. Ted also runs around 400 head of feeder steers each year. Throughout the past 35 years, Ted's family integrated new practices, converting to drills, planters and sprayers equipped with GPS to become more efficient and 100% no-till. Ted and Lisa identified soil erosion as a major concern in all their fields. So the family built miles of terraces and waterways. Ted also assists his landlords and other farmers in the construction of similar conservation practices. Cropland isn't the only focus for conservation for the Gutermans. Their livestock pens are designed so all runoff is directed to the grass filtering strips. The use of cover crops on the farm improves soil health, water infiltration, and reduces erosion, all while providing feed for the cattle to graze. The couple is passionate about taking part in programs that will benefit the land. They have enrolled in the Conservation Reserve Program, the Environmental Quality Incentives Program, Carbon Sequestering, and the Conservation Stewardship Program. The Gutermans hope to leave the land better than when they received it, to give their children a piece of what they have made better. Thank you for all of that hard work. It's much deserved recognition. Now we'd like to win it. Now we'd like to recognize our second place winners. Please help me congratulate Kurt and Andy Dale from Comanche County. Will the Dales, along with seven district board member Keith Miller, please join us on the stage? And while they're smiling pretty for the camera, I'd like to invite Greg and Susan Gartrell from Rooks County to join us on the stage along with six district board member Doug Zillinger. They're our third place winners in the Natural Resources Award.
now I'm pleased to have KFB's YFNR committee chair, John Buttonhoff, join me. John is from Lincoln County. He and his wife represent the 6th District on the state YFNR committee. John also serves on the KFB board of directors as an ex officio member representing the young farmers and ranchers. Thank you, Terry. It's a pleasure to represent all the great young agricultural leaders around Kansas. Uh, we want to thank Kansas Farm Bureau for all their support and continued support of our Young Farmers and Ranchers program and the work that the committee does and all those that attend our conference and are working across the state. Uh, we're excited to showcase this year's photo contest winners. Uh, this year's featured categories are as far as the eye can see and to go with our centennial century of Farm Bureau and for the love of livestock. Seems everyone loves to take pictures of their cows. <laughs> Our first place winners received a cash prize of $300, and second place winners received $200, uh, $150. There's also a People's Choice Award, and we need your help with that this morning to determine the recipient. Um, this year's winning photos are on display in the lobby. You'll see a black board with the six pictures on it. Uh, please take a few minutes before you leave for lunch and vote on your favorite so that we can present the People's Choice Award during this afternoon's general session. First, we'll recognize the winners in the As Far As The Eye Can See category. In second place, Nighttime Beauty by Gail Griffin from Thomas County. And As Far As The Eye Can See winner is An Evening View by Brandy Me Randy Marcy from Wichita County. Next is the Century of Farm Bureau category. In second place is Back Then by Fred Rogie from Washington County. And the Century of Farm Bureau category winner is God's Country by Dolly Wilson from Atchison County. Finally, we have the For Love of Livestock category. In second place is Should Have Seen It in Color by Andrea Vandiver Moore from McPherson County. And receiving first place in the For Love of Livestock category is Hiding from Mama by Cami Roth <laughs> from Reno County. Thank you to all our photo contestant participants and congratulations to this year's winners. And don't forget to vote before lunch. In addition to the KFB photo contest, the YFNR program hosts several additional competitions and we'd like to recognize these winners from last January who will be representing Kansas Farm Bureau in national competitions this winter. The 2018 Collegiate Discussion Meet winner is Jacob Brubaker, a senior at Fort Hayes State University from Cheyenne County. Winning our YFNR discussion meet is Jackie Mutt from Pratt County. The 2018 Excellence in Agriculture winners are Matt and Mindy Young from Atchison County. And finally, the 2018 Young Farmer and Rancher of the Year Award winners are Mike and Sarah Rosebrook from my home county of Lincoln. Please join me in congratulating these members and wishing them luck nationally in the next few months. Please, please encourage YFNR members in your counties to get involved in these competitive events and attend, YFN, attend the YFNR Leaders Conference back here in January. We'll look forward to seeing them. Thank you, and I will return the podium back to Mr. Holgren. Thanks, John. For the fifth year, Kansas Farm Bureau will be awarding a traveling trophy for membership gain. This award recognizes the county with the highest gain percentage for 2018. This year, the winner is Sherman County from District 10 with a gain percentage of more than 113%. Would someone from Sherman County please join us on the stage? <laughs> Along with the traveling trophy, Sherman County is entitled to send one person to the American Farm Bureau annual meeting with all expenses paid.
Each year, we also recognize one of our Farm Bureau Financial Services partners with the Kansas Farm Bureau Partnership Award. This award recognizes someone from the services side of our organization who has gone above and beyond for, our, for your farm organization. This year, we're excited to recognize Amanda Taylor, Sales Performance Manager at Farm Bureau Financial Services. Amanda, start making your way to the stage. Amanda works closely with Farm Bureau Financial Services agents in efforts to make KFB help us make membership gain and reach our goals for account growth and retention each year. Most importantly, she assures that communication happens between our teams, facilitates relationship building at all levels, and consistently promotes the mission of Kansas Farm Bureau with agency staff. We're proud to recognize Amanda as an excellent example of the great partnership between KFB and a successful agency force. Congratulations, Amanda, and thanks for all of your hard work. Back in the 1920s, Kansas Farm Bureau began offering quality insurance products to our members. That partnership has looked different in many ways over the years, and we're pleased to highlight it today and introduce you to Kansas, to the new Kansas Regional Vice President at Farm Bureau Financial Services, Michelle Huber. Michelle isn't a stranger to KFB. She brings 28 years of financial services experience to the state, beginning as a county coordinator and then a sales associate in Miami County, home of George Pretz. <laughs> Since then, Michelle has held nearly every position inside the agency force at Farm Bureau Financial Services. We're pleased to have her in the role as regional vice president and that she's willing to spend a few minutes with us today. Rich, I'll hand it over to you and Michelle. a little more of you, but uh, would you expand a little bit more? I know you've been around Farm Bureau for long, several years. Sure. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. A few in this room know how many years, that's why they're giggling. <laughs> <laughs> I've grown up at Farm Bureau, literally. I started uh, with Farm Bureau in 1990 as a sales associate. Back then we were called secretaries and, and of course at that time there were a lot of people in that position that were also county coordinators. It was more of a shared resource pretty much across the state at that time. And so I was a sales associate and I was also a county coordinator uh, when I first started with Farm Bureau. So that's how I came into the business. And from there was an agent for 10 years. So um, 10 years in Logan County. So worked directly with a lot of people in the room uh, in that position. Wound up uh, on the other side of the state for four years, so worked with some people on the other side of the state, including Mr. Pretz and his wife, uh, for four years while I was on that side of the state, and then moved into agency manager back in the northwest part of the state, which is where my husband's family is. So um, spent some time as director of agency, partnering with Larry Riley uh, as the regional vice president when he was serving in that role. And then re most recently, as you noted, stepped into the regional vice president job and I'm relocating to Manhattan and we're kind of in the process of that so really honored and humbled that you all asked me to spend a few minutes with you today um, it, it's just such an important part of our partnership and I'm really really pleased to be with you thank you well, Kansas Farm Bureau and financial financial services a long history of partnership and mutual support and how do you hope to build on our connection or our affinity that uh, we've had in this collective process? Yeah, it's a great question, and um, it, it's not necessarily a new conversation. Um, it was one I was involved in with President Backus during his tenure, and then, of course, really spending some time with you and Terry. Um, and, and I'm excited about the direction that we have with this partnership. Our district administrators and agency managers are probably more connected than we've been in a lot of years. Um, we're looking forward uh, to becoming more involved with our county boards and finding out how we can support their efforts and, and make sure that we're ensuring growth. Um, lots, of lots of good partnership occurring, um, and, and I'm excited for us to kind of, for some of us in the room that have been around a while, to kind of get back to the way things used to be when it comes to, the, to our partnership. Thank you for that. As we look at things, and insurance needs have changed a lot uh, since the formation of our services, we're back in the 1920s, but 
What is FBS doing here today to respond to the agricultural changes that we've had as far as risk management and overall insurance services? Yeah, it's a great question, and most of you in this room already know that uh, we, we are the number one ag writer in the state of Kansas, and we have been. Uh, but there's still a ton of opportunity for us to better serve uh, that market. And so it, it starts with our partnership um, and, and really staying closely connected to you and to Terry and making sure that uh, we're on top of the, the challenges that our uh, ag clients face and the opportunities as well. So it's making sure that we're abreast of what's going on in the ag community. Um, but also our agents are a key role in that. And we have a, a fairly new program that some of you may be familiar with, and I know you are, Rich, um, where we provide additional education uh, for our agents. It's, it's an ag certification for them um, so that they can be a little more specialized. Obviously, your business is uh, a complicated business, right? And so we need some additional training for agents so that they can specialize in those areas. So that's one of the ways. Um, we also, some of you have been exposed to a new resource in our company called our Ag Marketing Underwriters. So it allows us to take an expert, an additional expert with us out into the field as we're looking at, the, at that operation uh, to better learn all of the details, make sure that we're uh, providing appropriate risk management. Uh, so that's an amazing resource that the company has provided us going very, very well. Uh, on the claims side, again, it's kind of like the agent program, additional training. Uh, ag claims are a little bit specialized. And so again, the company is really investing in our claims personnel just to make sure that whoever's handling that has some background and experience that can help with that process. Um, and then, of course, just the partnership that we have uh, across the board. So all of those things really help us personalize and specialize. Um, technology is definitely a factor, but we know from our customer experience initiative where we gain feedback from people just like you, uh, that it's that personalized service and it's that specialized service that will help us stand apart going forward. As we've talked about being around for 100 years, and we're celebrating that here as this annual meeting, but uh, what excites you about the next 100 years as far as our relationship and the service you provide to our Kansas farmers? I, I think it's the things we've already talked about. It, it is um, the fact that our, uh, from my part of the partnership, um, our organization is really focusing in on growing our ag market. Even though we are the number one rider in Kansas, there's, there, you know, we don't have nearly the amount of market share that we would like to have across the state. So it's the focus from a company perspective in making sure that we dominate that market, that we serve our client members at a super high level um, to drive that retention up. Um, and, it's, and it's that ground level, it's that grassroots partnership that starts in all 105 Kansas counties where we are, we're enhancing um, the services that we can provide uh, and making sure that we're, we're just in complete alignment with each other going forward. So I'm super excited. Well, thank you very much. And, yeah. and really look forward to the opportunity to work with you as a rejuvenated group at Farm Financial Services. And as we go forward, as our mission statement says, advocacy, education, and service, and Absolutely. that our insurance services can get back to what we really need as a service to our membership. Thank you for what you're doing, and congratulations on your new position. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. President. Good interview skills this morning. And thanks, Michelle, for joining us for a few minutes. If you all have questions or want to learn more about the products and services of Farm Bureau Financial Services, they've got space and folks in the trade show area this morning. So I'm a fast talker and I'm a faster reader. And that lets us be very efficient in our execution of things this morning. So we're ahead of schedule. Congratulations. This year, we have moved the discussion, the open discussion of resolutions to 11.40 a.m. in the alcove room. So if you have any policy items that you'd like to discuss with the resolution committee, please take the time to see them there and plan to attend that opportunity. Our first round of workshops begins at 9.45, and that's like an hour from now. Um, so until then, 
please visit the silent auction in the Conta Prairie Room, which is right behind those walls, or see our partners in the trade show. In the meantime, we have a couple of videos that our staff has put together to commemorate 100 years of education and of service of the organization. We'd like to invite you to stay in this room and watch them. And after that, enjoy the workshop rounds this morning. We'll see you back here for the next general session at 1.30. Thanks and have a great morning. Formed in 1919, Kansas Farm Bureau did not waste any time providing services statewide for county farm bureaus who did not have the resources. The first real service KFB provided was to help market wool in 1920. Wool growers banded together to combat wool buyers who formed a buying pool to drive down wool prices. KFB played a pivotal role marketing the wool and helped create a state wool growers association. Kansas Farm Bureau purchased a surplus of horse collars from the United States Cavalry School at Fort Riley after World War I. The organization sold them to its members with only a small handling fee, making it affordable for Kansas farmers and ranchers. The same year, KFB helped farmers find land.